G'day, Aussie bonsai bloke here, how you go? Uh, today I'm going to be working on me, um, working on me olive here. I've neglected it over the last year, haven't done much to it. Let the weeds grow in here. As a result, it's had some fairly poor growth, so it's not an ideal thing to do just to leave it in the pot and let all these weeds grow. So I'm going to give it a bit of a birthday and repot it, give it a bit of a style, put it in some good potting mix and then, or bonsai soil and then, you know, look after it for the next year and hopefully it puts on some good growth for me. So in this video, I don't have a pot for it, so I'm going to make a wooden, just a wooden box for it, but probably about the same size as the finished pot will be. So it'll be just a matter of pretty much raking out the roots just a little bit and slipping it in a pot later on when I do find a pot for it. So it won't be a big deal for the tree. Um, apart from that, yeah, just a wooden box. I'll chuck it in that and I'll get to styling it and yeah, I'll walk you through the process. No worries, cheers. So hopefully it'll be a bit happier without all these weeds in here. I may have weeded it once, but as you can see, it's been a bit slack. Okay, so the first thing I'll do is, I've got to find out how big I want to make this wooden box for it. So I've got to get rid of this foam box here, which is getting pretty old, pretty ratty. So I'm going to pull that off. You'll notice with these foam boxes too, the roots actually grow into the foam a bit and actually make it quite difficult to get the foam off, which is all right. It just means that you can't really reuse them very well. Actually grow into it. Foam box makes a good alternative if you don't have a box or a pot to put them in because they keep the roots nice and insulated on a hot day. Having a bit of trouble getting this off. Spin it around. Alright, so that's the phone box off. So now I'm just going to break these roots out, get rid of all the weeds. This olive was flat cut, so I haven't actually seen the roots that it's grown since it was flat cut, so it's going to be a bit of a surprise to me. I've got no idea what's going to be in here. Looks like there's not a lot of roots at the front, which is not great, but we'll have to deal with that. Alright, so I'll get the root, the root rake and clean it out a bit. So yeah, basically just raking the roots out, getting rid of the weeds. Just being careful not to wreck any roots. Raking away, as you can see, we're starting to see a few of the roots and where they come off the trunk here. That's where it was flat cut on the bottom. You can see, creates it to root out right around the flat cut. The olive's one of the only ones that you can really just literally just cut off a massive cutting. Basically, you just cut flat cut the bottom of the trunk. So there's no roots at all, you're just flat cutting up. And the amazing thing is they grow. Not too many other, like I said, not too many others could do that. Olive's one of the only ones that will. You wanna know your know your species before you go go ahead and do something as vigorous as that. A lot of deciduous trees you can almost 
Almost flat cut, but not quite. You want to leave something. So yeah, I just keep digging away. Not sure how long I've had this tree now. It's been at least five, five to six years, I think. I bought it <coughs> as a trunk for about 30 bucks. Just looked like too much work for someone and they just sold it as a trunk with no branching on for 30 bucks, which is an absolute bargain, I reckon. I guess it just, the overall picture of it, it just looks like too much for some people. But if you take it step by step, it's actually not that big a deal working on a big tree compared to a little tree. In fact, Big trees are probably a bit easier to wire as far as you got bigger branches and more room to get your hands in there to wire. Sometimes the small fiddly ones almost seem a bit harder. Okay, so you can see I'm starting to get a bit of a spread of roots around the top there. So that's good, it actually looks pretty good. So then I'll get underneath here. I'm going to clean, I'm going to completely bare root this tree today. I just lost my hook, that's all. Looking for my hook. Ah, oh, I don't know, Sam. Hopeless sometimes. It's the same colour as the soil made it pretty hard to see. So just carefully roll it over. Scratch away at the bottom. That's it. I'm starting to see that it didn't really enjoy this soil a lot. It's almost like it's too wet. There's a rock. Probably from where it was collected, maybe. Yeah, it didn't really enjoy this soil much. It's just too waterlogged, I think. So hopefully, in its new pot, it'll be wood as well, so it'll breathe a bit better. Let a little bit more oxygen into the roots, rather than this tree is probably starving for a bit of oxygen. Right, so I've get it to that stage, and now I'll probably be trying to be careful for the roots. Probably now I'll just get the hose out and give it a fairly high pressure just to bare root it. Give it a shake. As you can see, it's got a nice root system all the way around. Not too bad. Pretty happy with that. Worth me 30 bucks. Right, I'll um, hose off the roots. Okay, so we got tree completely bare rooted, as you can see. Fairly reasonably healthy root system, really, even though it did look a bit waterlogged. Um, what is the actual back of the tree? Probably has a better root, so I'm wondering. I could almost repot that as the um, front of the tree. So you got better roots, and you've still got the apex, actually does come this way anyway, so that could be a good 
option. The only slight disadvantage with that, if I turn it around, the branching, there's a nice big fat branch here and one here which we're going to be the first and second branch. Then you do have this big open belly looking at you, which may actually be pretty ugly really, but still, we've got to make some decisions. Anyway, we've got to make a box for this thing, so let's go and, let's go and do that. Plenty of time to make the decision, so I'll keep this wet um, until we've made the box and get it potted up. Probably doesn't really matter because roots do last a fair while out of soil before they dry out. Even if the outside of the root gets dry, the inner core is still quite quite moist, so not too much to worry about. But keep it wet. Anything we can do to help the tree, the better. Okay, cheers. G'day, welcome back. Um, after washing the roots out, I realised that whoever did collect this before I bought it off them um, didn't flat cut the bottom, they've left a bit of a root ball underneath. So, I'm going to get out my new toy. My new Father's Day present. Happy Father's Day to everyone out there. Got this and a leaf blower. Pretty lucky. Looks like got some new blades. Seven hundred and fifty watt reciprocating saw and I'm going to cut off those roots that I don't need. I'll just unpack it here for you. We all like to see someone unpacking their toys. Okay, now what we got here? I'll have to find a way of opening that. Hang on, I'll just need some scissors or something here. Oh, nearly fell off my seat. Haven't had any drinks yet either, hey? Right. Get some scissors. These bonsai scissors come in handy for pretty much everything. Looks like you just... Looks like you just plonk it in the end of the saw and away you go. Okay, so there's some fairly aggressive teeth on there. I'll just try and show you. Looks like some fairly aggressive teeth, which is good on this sort of sappy wood from an olive because um, if you don't have aggressive teeth, they'll probably get gunked up pretty quickly. So it looks like I, yeah, it looks like I just twist wrong way. Sam, you idiot. Twist, plonk it in. Seems to be it. Alright, I'll plug it in. See how she goes. Yep, seems alright. Yeah. Might be able to see here on the bottom. We got this really big one here sticking down fairly big chunk here and what that's going to do is it's never going to allow you to put it in a shallower bonsai pot so I'm going to have to take care of that now and then there's actually not a lot of roots on them anyway like that one there only has those amount of roots on it and this lot here basically doesn't have any so I shouldn't reduce the vigor of the tree at all so I'll get in here and Chop them off. I'll take care of this one here first. We'll just try out the new toy. Not quite sure how it's going to go. Never used one before. That seemed pretty easy. I 
almost see the growth rings in there. Right. Nice clean cut too. I don't know how it's going to go on this bit here. This is going to be the big test. Pretty good. See, see the sap on these olives? Crazy amount of sap, and what that does is it all gets stuck. Makes it very hard to cut. So as you can see, it's got rid of a big chunk on the bottom there. This big chunk here, which has now enabled the tree to sit a lot flatter. You've got rid of that much depth. So you can have that much shallower pot now, which is a fair bit. Um, you can probably even see growth rings on there. It's not overly old. You might say one, two, three, four, five, six. You can see it had some hard years there. 10, 11, 12, 14, maybe 15. Maybe 15 years old. You can see the harder years where you've got a finer line. Maximum 15 years old, probably. They do grow pretty quick. You seem to like the climate here in Australia. So that's that bit off. Um, I also want to take a little bit more of a lump of that off. Just move my box. Just didn't. A little bit more lump here. And also there's a big root lump down here. another lump here it's actually some old dried up dead wood in there so those nice three lumps gone now when we sit down you notice it sits a lot flatter we we'll had to get it into a pot probably that deep which is actually not very deep for a tree this big I'll show you the bottom So you can see now it's quite flat on the bottom and it'll be able to get into a nice shallow tray but because I don't have a shallow pot for it what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a wooden box about the smallest wooden box I can get this tree into without having to chop too much of this root system off. I may cut around the edges a little bit but most of it I'll be trying to keep because I do want some good growth out of this tree in the next year. Well, happy Father's Day to me. That one worked pretty well. Alrighty. So we've got that flat cut done as you've seen before. Now the next thing to do is to work out the planting angle because you want to know the planting angle because if you have it planted at this angle and it's thinner and then you want to twist it that way and it becomes thicker front to back, you won't fit it in the box. So you've got to pretty much choose the planting angle. Um, I'm not sure. I think, I think I was going to use that as the front, but now definitely not, because I've looked at the bottom. I would have to tilt it forward a long way, and then what's going to happen from the side, if you were to tilt it that far, you have a look at the angle of the roots. There's no way you would get the back in to a pot. So if you were to plant it that way, the top already naturally comes towards here. 
so the roots are already flat in the pot so that's going to be that's going to be my front the only other thing I've got to work out is what angle I'll just chuck the camera down a bit okay so now you're down at the level of that you'll be seeing it at let me put it back a bit so to choose the front now I have a few options like that's going to be somewhere around the front I can either turn it this way more and have that as a side branch and this little one will become a become the main first branch and then this fat branch at the back here will have to become a um a bit of a back branch or another option and see so what that does if you go like that it actually creates a trunk um trunk line to be quite static as far as it's the same width, tapers in, no real movement right to the top, just like a straight triangle. Um, but the deadwood there is pretty good. Um, another thing I can do is I could spin it more that way. This will become sort of a back branch, semi, semi low first branch, but you won't see it too much. But what that does is the whole trunk leans away from you. You'll see, once I get rid of this, you'll see that that first branch there is at the fattest point here, which then tapers back in, which I think gives it a better line, because that's quite static. quite like that line. So you've got it going away, then the apex sort of comes back, so it gives it more movement. And I quite like that first branch as opposed to this branch. This branch is a bit uglier. So I think I will. I think I'll plant it something like that. Yep, I think something like that. I can maybe just stand it up a little bit towards me. But it's pretty good. So if that's what I choose as the front, the next thing. Will be to build the box for it so as it sits on the table there what I'm gonna have to do now is measure the width that I can reasonably get this tree into and probably I'll probably tuck a lot of these roots into it I could possibly get away with a 35 40 centimeter box maybe 35 35 would be starting to push it but it's doable and front to back hang on I'll spin it for you sorry about that front to back 35 would easy fit and 30 I think I could get it 30 so the inside diameter of my box has to be 35 by 30 centimeters and, if, and it'll be square obviously but in future I'll probably put this into a nice oval pot maybe a square pot we'll see how how muscular the tree looks when it's all developed if it looks quite muscular maybe I'll chuck it in a square pot square unglazed pot otherwise it'll probably go in a an oval unglazed pot see how we go so anyway so I'll probably put that under the sprinkler now and just um, keep it wet until I've built the box okay well got a bit of wood got the tree under some water one thing I did forget to tell you was that the depth of the tree the depth of the pot that I need minimum was going to be eight centimeters but I really wanted to make it ten to give it a little bit of soil underneath and I could only find bits of wood that are nine centimeters so it's sort of halfway in between so it should be okay the thickness of the woods almost four centimeters so 
I want one at 30 centimeters on the inside dimension so I'm going to make that one 34 or 38 centimeters to make up for the thickness of the wood so to make up the thickness of the other two bits of wood so that'll go this will be the end sort of piece and then I'll do another one at 38 and I'm going to do them fairly rough cut I can't find my square at the moment because my square's at the other house so I'm just going to guess try and do it as square as possible won't be the end of the world if it's not so I'll do to it cut to it 38 Okay, we've got our two bits of wood cut at 38. So they'll be, um, when they get put together, the inside measurement of these will be 30. Because once you take off the thickness of the thickness of the um, 35 centimetre piece, the inside will be around 30. So the other two I've got to cut at 30 centimetres. Uh, sorry, 35, it's going to be 30 by 35, so I'll cut them at 35. And the other one will be around 70. And then I'll just cut them. Okay, so we've got our lengths cut, and the shorter bits are actually going to be the longer side, and the longer bits are going to be the shorter side. So, what will happen now is these shorter bits will go there, and there, longer bits on the end, and roughly, this is not exact, doesn't have to be exact. Roughly the inside measurement should be 30 by 35. And that one's 30 and a half, 31, nearly 31 by 35. So that's pretty good. So what I'll do now is on these end pieces, I'm going to mark and drill out just as long as it's within the thickness of that wood. So in that line I'm going to mark two spots where I'm going to put screws on each bit of wood. Okay so I've got the drill bit out, it's a little bit smaller than the diameter, a little bit smaller than the diameter of the screw, only just. Um, it is a self tapper and you can get it to go in without pre-drilling it but it's very difficult and you can end up rounding off the head so I'd pre-drill it out a bit just to give it a bit of a hand seems to work all right so what I'll do now is I'll put my drill bit in Okay, so we've got our holes drilled in there, so next thing will be, just put the camera back a bit again, next thing will be to just stand it up, and just drill some holes into this piece here. Ok, 
go. So that fits a screw. Fairly simple. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on there. You probably don't need to. Doesn't matter if it leaks, but anyway I do put a bit of glue on there. Oh Sam you idiot. Gonna have to wipe that off. That glue is meant to be on the end. Oh well. Not gonna matter. Right, and then just make sure that I'm still in the video. Okay, so I'll put a bit of pressure on. Really screw it down tight. Here we go. So there's the first two done. It's only a growing box, so as you can see, I've put the screws in a bit crooked here. Bit of wood's a bit crooked, but it doesn't matter. It'll be alright. Um, next job, let me mark the other end. Put the drill bit back in. And then pre-drill this end. Hopefully this end I can get a bit straighter. I think when I drilled it, followed the grain of the wood a bit and went a bit crooked, but it doesn't matter. this one in, put a lot of pressure on it. I find too, if you don't pre-drill like this, you can end up splitting your wood a lot easier. Pre-drilling sort of eliminates splitting your wood. You end up with a split down here and... Okay, so that one went a bit better for you. And I'll repeat the process on the other end now. And then get back to you. Okay, as you can see, I've got the frame together now. So the tree will obviously go in here with the soil. And then the only thing I've got to do now is put a put a bottom on it. The bottom's a bit thinner. Pretty much doesn't matter, that's just what I had lying around. So what I'll do is I've got to work it out. Okay, so that weighs 38, that weighs 42. My bit of wood's only 78 long. So, I can't do it the 42 way because I've got to double it up. So I'll have to go that way to make the right length. And then I've just got to check that I've got enough wood for the width. So the width is 42 and the width of this is 23, which makes 46. So I've got to do it this way. And all I'll be doing is literally lining it up on the edge here. And then I'll be getting the marker pen underneath. And I'm going to literally just mark along there. And then I'll cut it. Okay. Okay, so we cut that. Now let's make sure we haven't made any stuff ups here. I'll get my bit of wood. Work out which way I did have it. Something like that, I think. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Lines up pretty well. So what I could do now is I could run along with the drill. Actually, one thing I might do first is put the glue in. Just for that piece. Okay, this looks pretty good. Pretty even. Now I'm just going to drill some holes. I 
only a two in each side because it's only a fairly short area so might just whack it into a high gear um, but with this fairly big area I'll be putting a lot more in Right, now I'm going to change my bit over to that other bit. I'm going to screw it in. Do the same all round. I say the battery powered ones do pretty well. It's very handy not having a cord. We put a fair bit of weight on there to stop it from burning off the end of the screw. Now, same here. I'll chuck it on there. Line it up pretty well. You could leave a gap in the middle for drainage, but I'm going to drill some holes anyway, so I'm not going to. Now what I'll do, is I'll just run around the edge, make sure it's lined up. Run around the edge with me. Texture. I've only got just enough wood for all of this, as you can see. Worked it out pretty well. And then I'll just cut around there with my hand saw. I do have a power saw, but um, not at this house. When I do finally get a house and move in and get set up, it'll be really good. I'm going to have a bonsai works workshop studio as well, I reckon. Okay, next job, get a, get a really big drill bit, big as it can fit in your drill pretty much, and all we're doing is drilling some drainage holes, going to drill some, I'll drill them in a line so that I can put a screen across um, to stop the soil coming out. Second speed here. You want a fair few? I might do three lines of four holes. Maybe another one for good luck. Drilling the table. Okay, I'll just zoom out a bit for you. That's pretty much my box done. Just move back with the camera a bit. So, probably about an hour later, got ourselves a nice box here. It will eventually rot out, but it should last probably two to three years before it really starts to fall apart which is plenty long enough by then I'll find a decent pot for it and put it in um, if you want it to last a bit longer I have got one that I made out of permapine and that one lasts is still going now I reckon it's been going eight about eight years permapine one so what I'm going to do now ideally you could put a bit of gutter guard really fine meshed gutter gutter guard or you could put in a uh, fly screen across the bottom here or another way that another thing that I use which seems to work alright doesn't seem to block up is I just lay bits of shade cloth in there over the holes okay so I'll lay some shade cloth in there swap that long piece over here 
short piece here, it's fairly long enough, just does it. Okay, so I'll lay that in, then I'll put some soil on top, and then I'll put the tree in. Okay, so I'm going to put me bonsai mix, which is just an Osmocote Professional. I um, don't mind this stuff, it works alright for our Australian climate. It's a little bit hotter here, so it's got a lot more organics and pine bark in it than you know what most people are used to for bonsai but in Australia it's pretty good so I'm just going to put a thin layer across the bottom I don't want it too fat because remember the um, bit of wood that I grabbed was only nine centimeters not ten like I would have preferred so I'll do a thin layer just to keep that shade cloth in place okay and then you can sort of mound up the middle a little bit just to make sure the middle of the tree gets dirt in and around it because you don't want too many air pockets one it allows it to dry out and two you might get a nest of ants or something in there which you don't really want so I've got a mound there it's hard to see but there's a mound in there maybe if I drop this down a bit you might see it better no it's too hard to see but anyway there's a mound there so now what I'll do so I'll put the tree in there and hope, hope it fits. It's going to be barely able to fit. I've made the pot reasonably tight on the tree so that it doesn't cost, doesn't cost as much for a pot later. And I think this size pot will be pretty good for it. If we can find a ceramic pot this sort of size. So I'll just go and get the tree. Seems to be fitting in okay. You just got to gently push all these roots in. Like I said, I'm not cutting too many off. If you go and if you shove it in with all those roots hanging up, all the roots will tend to come up and out the soil. So you want to carefully put them in first. Try and make them face down so they go into the soil. Looks like I've actually got a fair bit of spare room, so it'll be good to be allowed to grow a bit. I've just got one root at the back, which I'm going to shorten. Just a big, thick, thick root that was hanging up on the side of the pot. So I'm going to chuck it in there. I should probably do something about location in the pot as well, though, to be honest. If you go to the right a bit, because what's going to happen is when I take it out of here, I'm pretty much going to keep the same root ball. So if I want to go to the right a bit now, I'll probably keep the same position in a, another pot. And I also want to rotate it around a bit so that, like we discussed, I could keep this as a first main branch. Gives it a little bit more shape. Goes sort of out that way and then back this way. So up. It goes sort of up at an angle, more angle, and then back sharply. So that's pretty much it. I'll lean it forward slightly more. Rotate it around a little bit more. That's pretty good because then you can still see this big fat one at the back. So it's still interesting. Okay. What I will do before I put soil in is I'll get rid of all these low shoots because what's going to happen when I put the soil in, it's going to be hard to see some of these. It looks like the 9 centimeter sides were plenty. I'm going to pretty much be filling in quite, pretty much over all the roots, which is okay for now because they do need to develop a bit more first. So if I cover the roots again for the for this next repot, it's not a, not a big deal, let them fatten up. And then maybe by the Next time I repot this, these side, side roots will be a lot fatter and I'll be able to lift it up a bit and show some of that and maybe even put it in a shallow old pot later, we'll see. So I'll have to keep a bit of a scout out for 
give a bit of a scout out for pots in the next couple of years and try and find one that I think suits this tree. I don't know, I keep getting all these big trees and then when I go and try and, try and find a pot for them they cost 100 bucks each, which is a bit of a pity. It's a fair bit of money. And then sometimes I had one big pot just break on me, I think the roots just expanded that much inside the pot that cracked, cracked the pot. We don't get cold enough here to freeze the pot and have it crack. I think it just cracked from the pressure of all the roots in there. So that was a bit of a pity. So yeah, like I say, you want a big tree, you've got to be prepared to spend money on a pot. I'll just bring it in closer and show you how that fits. As you can see, it's got a nice root spread. It all fits in really nicely. So my next job will be to fill in soil around the whole thing. And then because I've got so many roots and so many holes and areas to fill in, I'm going to have to do a lot of work um, just filling in the soil in an area. So what I'll do is I'll show you one area where I fill it in and then I'll probably go into the old hyperlapse and just do the rest of the root ball because I don't want any air pockets in here at all. I want to give this tree the best start I can so that over this next year hopefully it really does develop a lot. Alright, no worries, I'll get to doing that. Okay, so my first job will be to chuck a bit of soil in, in these roots. Better off if the soil is a little bit drier too because it goes in there a lot better. And this bonsai mix is reasonably dry. There's a lot of sand and grit in there. So what I'll do now... You're going to blow bubbles, guys? Yeah, both. So what I'll do now is I'm going to mix in some soil in this roots. And you can see... You can see the as I move this around, I'm using just an old, I don't know, chisel or not a chisel, I don't know what you would call it, but anyway, I'm using that. You could use a chopstick or a screwdriver, whatever you want to use. And you want to keep a mound of soil over where you're working it in. You'd be surprised how much soil actually goes in here because there's some big crevices and stuff and just keep as you're moving it around just keep pushing the soil in pushing it in as you can see we're already running out of soil so I'll just keep moving it around different spots put another mound of soil over the top and it's gonna it just keep working it in working it in until you can feel that it gets a bit more solid where you're trying to work it in and then um, and you'll notice too that it won't take any more soil so you just keep going I'm going to put a little bit more on top of there because I think it's still got a bit to go ok we'll keep working that in As you can see, it's a bit of a time-consuming process, but you've got to do this thoroughly because it just gives the tree such a head start. And with that mound that we had underneath the base, that mound, when I pushed it in and rotated it around, that filled in all the underside of the base of the tree, so we don't have to worry about trying to get underneath it. So I'm just going to keep working in here, working in. As you can see, it's taken up a lot of soil in there, but it's getting a lot firmer now, so I'm starting to fill in all the voids. It feels a lot firmer. So I'm pretty happy with how I've done that a little bit. And then what you can do is you can just push it in nice and firm and add a bit on top. Once you, once you feel like you've filled in all the voids, Okay, so there's some on top there. So I'm going to do that around the whole tree. So I'll spin around and do this next section.
and then just keep going through the whole tree. Cheers, I'll see you when I'm done. Okay, welcome back. Well, so far I'll give you a bit of a recap. We've got it out of its pot full of weeds. We've, um, I'll just sit down so you can see my ugly face here. Getting a bit woolly these days, got the winter coat on. Um, anyway, so we've got rid of the weeds. We've pulled it out of that foam box. We've made a new box. I've put it into this box now and it fits beautifully. About the right size for it. Um, it's got a beautiful big base on this tree um, and reasonable root system around now as well. So all I've got to do now is I'm going to water it in for you and then I'm going to walk you through a little bit of styling. We'll do some styling on it. Um, a little bit of wiring. There's not a lot to style and wire because as I said it didn't put on a huge amount of growth over the last season so there's not a lot to do but there's some a few branches around the place that I can move into spots that have got a lot of negative space and need another branch in there so I'll get to that so I'll just water it in for you got the old watering can ready kids are being a bit feral in the background so you might hear them mucking around with their bubbles so I'll just carefully water around here Allowing it to drain through and not washing too much out of the pot, I hope. And if you do have a few little small areas where you haven't worked the soil in properly, um, if you give it a good soak, that can help. That can certainly help to fill in some of those areas as well. Um, but I think I've done a pretty good job at getting rid of all the air pockets in there. hopefully in this next year this tree will be a lot happier in a better mix of soil as you can see it's drains down reasonably quick give it a bit more see this tree in, in the original development of this tree it did grow really quick I guess it had energy from when it was dug out the ground so the trunk had lots of energy and it really grew really quick and I actually had hard to see but in here this trunk curves around here I actually had like this another S sort of thing on top and I didn't like it so I cut it clean off might have done it in another video that I did on this one not sure when I carved it out I might have shown you that I cut it off so it's gonna make a really powerful short tree this one quite excited about it sort of it's on its way but it's got a long way to go so that's the front. So as that is the front, you can sort of see some of the drama in here of the carving and the hardship the tree's gone through. So I'll get to cleaning it up. I'll just keep watering it in a bit. Just so I know that the whole thing's wet. The only thing is now while I'm working on it, if I got my legs under the table, I might end up getting dripped on. That's all right. I'm happy to put up with that for the tree. Oops, nearly wet the dog. Sorry, dog. What do you get for walking under the water and can? Okay, so I'll just give you a, give you a bit of a close-up of the drainage on this. It's sort of an in-between drainage with this mix. Okay, so I'll give it give it some water, let it pull up. 
as you can see it's not ultra fast but it's not too bad watch it drain through and you'll notice too these stones are starting to come on the surface and after you've watered it a few times you'll notice that a lot of stones come on the top which makes it look quite good mind you I'll probably moss this anyway put a bit of moss on there and try and keep the bloody black birds off of it so as you can see that water's drained away and I'll get to styling it now cheers okay as you can see here first job is I'm going to take off a bit of old wire you can unwind it but you've got the risk if you unwind it you've got the risk of pulling off the old bark so I like to just chop it off um, I don't think it's grown into the branch too much you might see odd sections like um, where it's cut in just take off a bit more wire and then I'll show you there is a there is a section here where it has cut in on an olive it's not too bad it'll grow out pretty quickly but that section there where it's cut in don't want it any worse than that it sort of gets a bit worse as it gets towards the trunk I did neglect this so I mean that's part of the issue I neglected this tree during the summer because it wasn't growing much either and it had so many weeds in it I sort of gave up on it and I was busy so I'm going to try and respect the tree a bit more this time and do some jobs as they need doing another risk you have too if you let it um, cut in too much what can happen is that when you pull the wire off you take some of the bark with it and then what will happen is that whole piece could end up dying back. So anyway, that's the wire off. Um, I'll do that around the whole tree. There's a few other sections around the place that are very similar. There's a section there. I'll just show you again. It's got two lots of wire on. So I cut the wire off. Then I sort of just pull that wire off, pull it out the way. And I'll go and do that over the whole tree. There's a little bit of it, but not too much. Didn't wire it much. There's some sections. So as you can see, same thing. It's dug in a little bit, but it's not too bad. You can sort of see it digs in around there as well anyway so I'll take the wire off the old wire and then we'll get to doing some trimming okay well I'll um now talk you through I've got the wire off um now I'll talk you through a little bit of branch choice and all that sort of stuff Okay, because we've had that angle change, uh, when we repotted, I chopped off some of these low shoots, as you've seen, so that's done. Just keep those little sucker shoots off. Right, so now, because we've had this angle change and the front's changed, this was going to become a back, a back branch, but now it's probably not going to be needed. As you can see, it was going to be bent out, wired out as a back branch, but we've got this main branch here, sort of a branch here, I might even keep this one here, although I don't think I will, because I think this one here can sort of take its place anyway, and you've got that back one there, it's just a, sort of like a deep first branch, or, and it sort of doubles into a back branch, alright, so I'm going to chop that one off, at the front, as you can see it's gone, and I'll let that, well, it'll naturally, it's 
sort of callus around there a bit and you'll probably be left with an old stub there nearly permanently but that's all right okay i'll probably put a bit of cut paste from that one later because i actually noticed it's a fairly thin live vein there and i chopped a fair bit of that off so i'll probably put a bit of not cut paste but just some wood glue um hang on i think i've got some on the ground here you know, I'm sure it'll still be fine. It's still got enough room there to go around both sides of it, but just to be safe, I'm going to seal it off. Bit of ordinary wood glue. Looks a bit ugly, but it's a lot cheaper than cut paste. The only difference is ordinary wood glue doesn't have the natural fungicide or whatever in it, so you can get mould and stuff in there, but I don't think you will anyway with glue on there right so that's that branch gone and in here you want to remove these ones on the inside of this first branch so that it opens it up so that you can see the sort of fatness of this first branch another thing which is a bit of a problem is when I first styled this tree I was you know right at the early stages of my bonsai hobby i suppose you could say and what i was doing is i was doing flat pad flat pad flat pad flat pad like a pine and i don't think these look very good as a pine so now what i'm going to try and do is just to you can have your branching instead of just being flat like that you can have one down one up one down one up and then one down and what that does is it fattens your pad so you could end up with one up there one down one up one down and what it does is it makes your branching a lot more broad fills in a lot of that negative space which on broad leaf you don't have as much you could also bring that one down although i don't think so because that hides the nice fat first branch there this one facing in towards the rest of the trunk I don't think that really adds anything in the future I'll probably want to bring one of these around a little bit you do got to be careful with the, with these wire marks on there if you bend it too far it can snap at that point um, so yeah, I might end up keeping one of these up top, give it a bit more, a little bit, so it fills in a bit more space, I guess you could say. So I might bend one of those up there like that. It'll be a straight section, but it'll hopefully shoot out a bit. So I'll shorten that and hope for, maybe shorten it to there and then that'll hopefully fill in the pad and make it nice and full rather than just a flat pad um, this one up here I'm gonna have to get rid of that because that comes out in between the two main branches so it'll be it'll become a third branch and create a big fat knuckle so that's got to go there's some little shoots in here which got to go a few of those Okay, so now you can see that first main branch is quite fat, quite interesting. I'll try and give you a bit of a close up on it. See, it's quite a fat first branch with a bit of movement in it. We've got deadwood there. I'm going to try to bend that one down like that just to create a bit of fill in. And then you've only got the two branches there. And then your, your other branches back there. So I'm going to use that one. And I'm going to try and do that through the tree just to, just to make it, you know, more filled in. So you don't have those big flat pads. More like a deciduous type of a tree. And another thing I'll be doing too is just stripping some of these inside leaves which will get in the way of the wire. 
stripping some of those. This one's facing down. I'll be cutting that one off. Um, this little one here that you might be able to see. When that shoots out, I'm going to keep that. And then that'll try and fill in the branch and bring this main branch forward more and hopefully even cross the trunk a little bit. It's in a good spot to do that, so I'll keep that one. And yeah, then I'm just going to wire out. Once I decide which ones I'm going to keep, I'm just going to wire it out. So we'll just bring it in here. Okay, so we got this branch here now. So my idea is this branch will be pulled up. I can still get rid of some of these inside shoots here. Gonna get in the way of the wire. Okay, so a lot of these branches I'm gonna keep and wire out just to fill in the pads, make it a bit more dense. And this one, wire these out, wire that out, wire this one out and around here, and that one out, and maybe lift this back branch up a bit to help fill in this massive area here. So that's the general idea. So I'm going to go through and clean up all of those shoots. Fairly similar to that one. There's a little branch here that's going to be cut off because that's just underneath this main branch here, there's one coming back in towards the rest of the branches, it's going to go. So I'm just cleaning up the lines. This one here I'm going to wire out a bit, so I'm going to keep most of that, just cut it back a bit shorter. Got one going down here I'm going to cut off. This one here I can use the wire to flatten that off, bend it out and around. I'm going to keep all of this, all of this. I'll bend that one around, so for now I'll keep it. I'll shorten it back after. Um, so all of those will be wide. I've got one coming right from the inside of this branch. It's going to go. Um, some dog's being a bit silly. It's hard to tell. It's hard to tell on the camera what you can see and what you can't. Okay, so here we got a. A branch which will be coming at you which is good and I'm going to keep possibly keep this side one and just bend it up but these two inside ones here this one and this one they come straight up out the middle of a um, crotch so they got to go and then really just got to clean up a lot of leaves because as you can see it's very hard to see what's going on in there for you on the camera and for me because there's another one inside the crotch gone it's very hard to see with all these leaves here what is even going on now i've got to clean them all up so that i can put the wire on also now i'm going to wire these branches out and possibly keep most of that length here we've got here we got three shoots so you got one, two, and then three. And because this one here is going to help a lot with filling in the branching, and this one will help, I'm going to cut this back one off. So it's back to two. Might even take a few of these little leaves off. So you can see that goes to two now. That one, three. Same here, clean the leaves out the inside. I'll be wiring that out, taking back the stub, shortening it, just wire that out, wire this one out, wire that one out, wire this one out, cut it back, and I'm going to go through the whole tree and do that. That's pretty much the process through the whole tree, those two branches I showed you. I'll be doing the same thing through the whole tree, so there's no point showing you that, and then I'll be wiring it all out and shaping it. Okay, cheers.
welcome back. Um, getting on in the day a bit. Good time for a drink. So I'll have a bit of a drink. I won't have too much. I might get the old uh, hiccups again. Um, anyway, so I've, I've cleaned the tree up pretty well. Got rid of a lot of these. Just seen another shoot hanging down here. Hang on, I'll cut that off. Got rid of a lot of the branches where there was three from one location. The olives are really renowned for having three from one location because they have got opposing branches, meaning that on a branch, um, what happens is, is if, if you've got the main branch, then you've got two leaves, it'll shoot out opposing there. But if you leave that long down here, and these two shoot out, you have three branches. So, because they're not alternating, alternating branches you don't have the same trouble with um, three branches from one location. But with these opposing branches you do, so you just gotta keep an eye on that. So you just gotta keep cleaning out shoots that you don't want. Um, so now we've got to the point where I gotta wire it. So I'm gonna just walk you through one branch. I'm gonna wire it this fairly main branch here that's fairly involved in wiring. I'll wire that one out and then I'll um, probably hyperlapse the rest of it and then I'll show you the finished tree. So I'll just show you how to wire that one branch. Okay, the first thing you want to do when you're wiring out this branch, I'm going to wire out this main branch here, is you want to do the, the structural pieces first. This main branch here we're not going to be able to bend. I plan on bending this one and I also want to be able to move this one a bit so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pair this one here up run around this main branch then come along this one here come along this one here round up to there so that they sort of hold each other in place and it holds a bit of structure so I'll do that all the way up to the tip of this one and the tip of that one and I'll get some uh, some wire, type of wire that you need, basically. This is aluminum, so it needs to be a little bit thicker than copper. Basically, if you hold the branch with your fingertips here, you grab that wire, and if you push with that wire, and that branch bends instead of the wire bending, it's strong enough. And see how the wire's just starting to try and bend a bit there? means it's about right. If you were to... If you were to use some wire, like this thin stuff here, hold the branch, go to bend the branch, and the wire just bends, it's not strong enough. So that's basically, that's a good way to tell. Right, so first thing, just get the right length of wire that you're going to need. Okay, so while I'm um, wiring this main one here, Another way to do it is to leave the roll connected to your wire so you don't waste as much wire. And you want to go a fair way past because you've got to remember it's got to go around this fat section which is going to use up a lot of wire. Okay, so you can go down under that. Move these other branches out the way, being careful not to wreck them. You can pull these leaves off the inside as you do it. I've cleaned most of them off, but there's still some there. And then you want to support the branch with your fingers here and hold it so that you're bending, so that you're supporting the branch and holding the wire as you bend it around. And then just watch out for all your internodes and stuff. You don't want to squash it too much. So that's that bit. As you can see, it's almost even a little bit short, but that's fine going to be able to get the movement we want in it. Then you can come back to here, we want to get to the end of this branch so I can cut it off now and then just wire around, wire around this main branch, pull any leaves off that you don't want and just wire around, there we go, cut it just about perfect. And now you should be able to move that branch wherever you want to go because we already pre-checked the 
strength of that wire. This one here, you can bend it around, bend it up. And always wire in the direction you want to bend it. See this one here, we bent that way. And that's the same direction. This one we've bent this way. And it's wired in the same direction that we're bending it, which is a good idea. And by bending this one here out, we can create a bit of space for this one here to be able to grow into this area and have enough space to do so. So that one there is a bit smaller. So the plan for that one probably be to wire it up with this one. So what we do to do that, so I'll just cut a length of, bra a length of wire that I think I need. Okay, and I'll wrap around this little branch where I think I need it. Be careful to support it the whole time. I usually finish off bending it backwards too to create like a little loop so that the branch can't fall out of the wire because sometimes when you go to bend it, this little section here will actually fall out the wire and then you'll end up with a straight section at the end. Okay, so then we wire along, follow this wire on, the, on this main branch structure, follow that along, wire out, and go onto this small little branch. Be careful not to squash the leaves or the buds as you do it. Ideally, when you finish doing it, you shouldn't have any pinched leaves. They should still look fairly uniform, which they generally do. If you do wreck them a bit, you know they'll grow back and once again we bend that somewhere to where we think we might want it in the future I'm going to bend it up a bit so that it helps fill in and make it a more full pad or branching and put some interest in that one and then we just got this little one here at the end to go on that branch so what we'll do is get some really fine wire on that one And what we can do here is it probably teared up with this one here. We can use that one to join in with it. So we wrap around, always supporting the branching as you do it. Just being careful for the leaves and the buds. Chop off the excess. Oops, kick the camera. Chop this bit of excess off. Okay, so then we can bend that one out. It's only very small and short. But it'll be fine. It'll grow in it'll grow in the future and fill in that area. That's void. Okay. And then the only one left to do now these big fat ones here so I'll use some fairly fairly high gauge here probably I'd say this sort of this sort of size would probably be alright see it sort of bends the branching rather than bending the wire and I'll wrap it around give it a good wrap Got my uh, daughter over here patting the dogs behind the chair. You want to say hello, Tay? Hello. <laughs> She's running away. Okay, so that's wired around there. I've still got this bit of wire connected so that I can make sure that I utilize the wire perfectly without wasting any okay and then when you get to here one important thing to do it's barely in the camera view hang on 
So when you get out to the tip here, you can see that branching. One important thing to do, because if I'm going to wire these two branches together, the important thing to do is just to do one and a half wraps along that branch here. And then stop it. Even though the wire is a little bit fat for it, what that allows to happen is that then when I go and put on this thin wire, which I will in a second, now when I put on this thin wire, what's going to happen, I'll just run it around the other branch. Okay, so let's run around the other branch. So what's going to happen now, if I want to bend this one around, I can anywhere. Bend it around, bend this one somewhere. And now what's going to happen is on the end of this branch, if I wasn't to feed this main structure wire into that branch, what can happen, then when you wire them two together, if you want one to go up, one down or both up, what will happen, because you've got no structure there going into the secondary branching, this will just flop around and you can't get it to go up or down, you can only get it to go in or out sideways, you can't go up and down, so it's a good idea to run that main primary wire through to the secondary branching at least a turn and a half and then to wire your little branching okay so I've only got one little branch to go here and for that one all I'll do is I'll join it up to one of the other branches there okay I know this might seem like boring tedious work but this is part of Bonsai, and to be honest, when you get into it, wiring's actually quite therapeutic. You quite enjoy it. You can sort of just sit back and relax. Same thing, just wire around very carefully. And then you can move it around and manipulate it wherever you want it, because you've got the wire on there. It's branching here. Create some nice dramatic bends. So this one here's now got some nice dramatic bends in it. Okay, because as the branch thickens, the bends visually look less. Yeah, and dramatic bends are always more interesting to the eye, so always good to do. Try and bend this one out to the front more. And basically, if everything bends to where you want it, you've put on thick enough wire. So that's about it. I'm going to wire out the rest of the tree. I'll give you a bit of a look from the front. I'll just put the camera down a bit so that you can see that branch that we've wired. So you come back to the front and just, just adjust stuff. No, I sort of want that one towards the front a bit. So it'll sort of fill in some areas. I might even go up with that one actually. It's not until you get to the front that you start to really see where you want something. So I might go sort of have this low branch, but then have this one go up and then towards you back branch can go out and fill in that back sort of area I'm pretty happy with this I'll probably bring this one down and you can see how all these branches move when I want them to create a lot of interest there this one here I'll bend around and that will become a side branch there but maybe go up a little bit with it as you can see, it holds its position pretty well. And that's it for that one. So, that branch looks a bit strange from there. 
as it fills in and divides out it'll um, look quite interesting so basically you're just trying to fill in all the voids all the areas create nice big fat thick branch structure and random as well you don't want it you don't want it all too orchestrated not like the pines so I'll wire the rest of the tree and hopefully it'll all come into place and you'll be able to see what I mean by the end of it cheers finished so just wanted to show you I'm gonna put a guide wire on here so I put this plastic tube it's like fish fish tank tube and I'll put that around this branch here this branch here I feel like it's just hanging down a bit low I want to bring it up and I find the easiest way for this one probably gonna be a guide wire so I'll guide wire that just twist it off Okay, feed that through here. Feed it through the tube. Okay. Then I'm just going to simply pull that up while I pull down on this other line until I think it's somewhere where I want it you can actually go a little bit past where you want it because when you take it off in six months to a year time it, it could fall back down just slightly not much but just slightly olives are pretty good at holding the shape they don't seem to lose their shape too much once you wire them in place that's generally how they stay so I'll just wire that one around there so you can see there's a guide wire in there now um, just doing the final touches of the tree. This and that looks a bit weird. Oh, it's crossing. Just doing a bit of work on. Just trying to keep a general flow of the tree. Um, one thing I will show you, you see how I was talking about, with my fingers, I was talking about having one branch down, one up, one down, one up, just to give it a bit more 
fullness to the pad and a bit more of a deciduous look. I'll just show you here. I've done it on this branch here. So what I've done is I've gone up with that one, down, up, then down. And it's given it a, a bit of a fullness to the branch. Whether or not you can see that. And as it develops, it looks a bit ugly now, but as it as it develops, it'll um, fill in and look quite good, I think. Anyway... Well, good day. Pretty much finished. I might do some minor bending and stuff as I look at it on the bench when I'm watering it or whatever. But in general, I'm pretty happy with the shape of it at the moment. And that'll be pretty much how it's going to stay. And I'll just clip and grow it. And... I guess, yeah, just clip and grow it now through the summer and then take the wire off once it's, once the branches fatten up enough that it starts cutting in. So probably in three or four months I'll have to take all this wire off. Pretty much wire the whole tree. I don't think I've fully wired a tree for a while, but I do do it. When a tree needs it, like this one, I get in there and I wire out the whole thing. There's a few branches here that I've forgotten to bend once I've wired. Do want to do want to try and create a bit of movement and shape to them. Anyway, I can come through and adjust those later. Anyway, if I don't like what I've done with them. Anyway, yeah. So in general, I'm pretty much finished. Hang on, I'll just give you a bit of a spin of the tree. Been a Fairly long process from repotting it to making the box to getting it in here and wiring it and trimming it. But yeah, that's the spin of the whole tree. Hope you enjoyed the video today. It's a fairly long one. Um, I didn't have too much in the way of hyperlapse today. I just wanted to wanted to walk you through the whole thing I've had a good fun day for Father's Day I've tested out my new reciprocating saw had a good time no worries cheers for watching Aussie Bonsai Blood please like share subscribe and I'll catch you later cheers oh and check out my Instagram too cheers have a good one